as they have been in other countries and other times and places. Um, lying, lying has been very, very central, actually, to a lot of 20th century governments. But I, the, the correct comparison to him, though, is you if you look at Putin and how he uses lies, and if you look at Chavez and how he used lies, um, you do see that there are um, leaders who you know, who have used them effectively. So Putin uses them in a very specific way. He lies, um, well, he and his, and the media that he controls, and he, again, is in a different position because he controls all the media, which is, again, not the case with Trump. He's acting in a, in a different climate. But mm -hmm. um, he, he creates lies um, deliberately, partly to um, devalue the entire concept of truth. I mean, it's very interesting Look at what happened after the um, that that Malaysian plane crashed in Ukraine a couple mm. of years ago. Yep. It was shot down by we now know it was shot down by um, uh, Russian anti-aircraft weapons, and it it crashed in Ukraine, and um, many people died, including many Dutch people. What was what did the Russian media do after that? It didn't say we didn't do it. No, instead it released literally dozens of different of explanations. You know, there was one explanation, it was the Ukrainians shot them down because they were aiming at Putin's plane. There was another explanation that said there were lots of dead people put on the plane on purpose and it was crashed on purpose, you know, as to discredit Russia. There was another, you know, you know very many of them were absurd, the, the, the explanations. But the pro proliferation of them was such that it created this massive confusion around that event. And Radio Free Europe did a very good, um, series of interviews on the, on, in Moscow at that time right afterwards. And they asked people on the street, you know, who, why did that plane crash? And overwhelmingly, people said things like, oh, we have no idea and we'll never know. It's impossible to find out. You know, the truth cannot mm -hmm. be known. And the effect of Putin and Putin's press, um, the sort of multiplication of explanations was that it obfuscated the idea of truth. You know, people don't believe you can find out the truth. Um, and that's very useful to a dictator. You know, Putin doesn't want people, people, he doesn't want people to believe anything because, you know, maybe somebody will eventually print, for example, how much money he really has or, and they actually, you know, many things about his, you know, his colleagues and associates have been printed. There has been information about money stolen. There's a big piece actually in the last few days reported by several newspapers about much the extent of Russian money laundering in Europe and how much, you know, billions of dollars stolen from the Russian budget and so on. So what Putin wants is for all those stories to be undermined. You know, so if you if you tell lots and lots of lies, then people don't really know what to believe and they don't and I don't want to make a direct analogy to what Trump is doing, but Trump clearly is trying to undermine the you know the so-called mainstream media or even you know just the media he wants people to doubt what they read he wants his followers not to believe i don't know the new york times or 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 the washington post and so you know by by lying he obfuscates the whole space in a way you know the whole media space and the media conversation is thrown into chaos i mean i think it's really interesting how 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 difficult it is for sort of mainstream reporters, I mean, really, with, whether they have kind of center-right or center-left views, even to describe what he's doing. I mean, for example, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as he made that wiretapping claim, Obama denied it almost immediately. It was pretty clear to me right away that it wasn't true, you know, that he'd made it up, and as you say, to distract from something else. But it's very difficult for, you know, in our in our media environment, it was very hard for people to cope with that. And you know, people kept reporting on it and they kept asking him questions about it. And it was very difficult for us to come to terms with it. And I think what it helped to do was undermine the whole idea that the press can report on things that are true and, and find truth and falsehood and that there's anything that can be true or false at all. You know, he he prefers to exist in a kind of fantasy world where he can make up reality. So he can say, um, I don't know, you know, I won the popular vote in the election where there were millions of people at my inauguration. And he wants people to believe that because he wants to create reality and not be, you know, be, be beholden to reality. And lying is one of the ways in which political leaders do that. They do it in Russia. They do it in Venezuela. They do it in, um, they do it in Turkey. I mean, it's, it can be done. Um, you know, you can, you can, it, it turns out that you don't need a, even a police state to do that. You can sort of pollute the information space just by lying. Hmm. Um, and I think he has done that. And what's, you know, the interesting thing will be to watch what happens 
um, both to the American press and to the American political debate over the next several years. Um, and, I, and I actually don't, I don't have a prediction exactly. As I, as I can tell you what happened in, you know, in totalitarian countries where people were forced to believe in lies or were forbidden from contradicting them. But how it will work in, 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 um, in the United States, I don't know yet. Um, you know, in other countries, you get a phenomenon where people separate public life from private life. In other words, there's one set of values that apply in the public sphere. You know, in the public sphere, you lie. And then mm. in the private sphere, you behave differently around your family and your children and so on. And maybe something like that will happen in America, where people begin to say, right, the public sphere is different. And, you know, we behave differently there and we, and we behave differently at home. Maybe you will begin to get um, people cutting themselves off 